Well, fourth graders, I want to teach you what cops are. You know what a police officer is, and cops is kind of a, de a derogatory or a negative term when you talk about a police officer, okay? But for writing, it's the most important thing you can be. So if you want to imagine yourself putting on a police officer cap when you're a cops, you're going to become the teacher, and you're going to check your work, okay? If you can get really good at copsing your work, you're going to become an awesome writer. So what does cops stand for? The C stands for capitalization. Oops, I can spell capitalization. That means, have you capitalized everything you need to capitalize? Your O's, your I's, your first letter of every word of sentence, that kind of thing, your proper noun, capitalization. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger because I think that's kind of small, okay? That O stands for organization. And that's kind of a all-encompassing kind of a word, meaning it covers a lot of stuff. Do you have paragraphs where you're supposed to have paragraphs? Are they indented? What the word supposed to be indented? Um, do you have a? If we're writing a summary, do you have your beginning, your middle, your end? Do you have your hook? You, do you have your introduction? Do you have your closing? All the pieces that are involved. So organization will really kind of change depending on what we're typing and what we're writing. Okay. P stands for punctuation. That means, do you have your ending punctuation in the right places? If you're asking a question, do you have a question mark, an exclamation point? Do you have quotation marks in the right spot? Do you have your commas with your quotation marks? Are they all punctuated correctly? Do you have a punctuation at the end of every sentence? That's what I'm looking for for punctuation, and that's what you need to be looking for. The S, well, that one is spelling. And that one, I know we don't teach spelling right out, but I teach spelling through our writing, and that's where we're going to learn to spell. If you have an underline, those are your best friends because they're going to tell you if something misspelled. Let me show you an example. I'm going to write a sentence. The mom, let's do, the mom ran to the store and see how it, it corrected it for me. See how the red underline right there, I can right click on it and it says, did you mean store? How polite they are. Of course I did. Thank you for telling me, Mr. Google store and I can fix it. So you have no excuse to have spelling errors on your writing, unless, of course, you do something like this. Ran um, of the store, um, that ran to the store. And you write the wrong two. Oh, you see, it even doesn't like the wrong two. If I right click on that one, it's gonna say, consider changing it to that, I will. So it, I mean, it's really hard to get past that. Now see this underline here? It's because I have these extra spaces there. See, it wants you to do that. Do a colon and then do a capital. So that's what your underlines are for. And I want you to make sure you use them. That's what a cops is. And I'm gonna ask you to do this every time before you turn something in. Cops your work. And each one of those is gonna be worth a point. And it will lower your score if you haven't copsed it. If I find capitalization problems, you're gonna lose a point. If I find you haven't organized it properly, you're going to lose a point. Punctuation problems or spelling, you're going to lose some points. Now, there is something really cool about spelling you can do if your spell check is not kicking up anything. If you read your, your paper backwards, one word at a time, what that does is your brain is forced to look at each word. It looks at each word individually. Because if you read it forwards, you already know what you wrote, and your brain just automatically adds in words. It's kind of crazy how it does that. So read it backwards and read one word at a time. And you will see that, my goodness, you are able to find some words that are misspelled. Okay? Another way to do it is grab a friend and cops each other's works. And that sometimes helps as well. Okay? Any questions, feel free to ask. And we're going to add this page to our journal. Okay? And I think there's a whole page of this in our journal. So if you want to share this with me, we can do that. Otherwise, I really highly... I encourage you not to share it with me. Just create your document, do this, and, um, and then when you get to school, in your journal, I'm going to tell you to write down what COP stands for, and you'll do it. And, um, and that way you have it mastered in your brain and your memory. Okay? Talk to you later.